Everyone excited? Uh, come on, one more, one more. There we go. There we go. All right. Welcome to Jamf and hope you're in the right spot. We have a very special guest with us. He traveled quite a ways to get here. Uh, so I have the pleasure of introducing Francois. Uh, he's an Apple consultant from Maris, uh, and he's not from the US, so he traveled quite a ways to get here. A uh, couple quick notes just before we get started. We do have some uh, microphones up front for questions. So as you all have questions uh, towards the end of the, the presentation, we'll take as many as we can. Uh, we're going to uh, finish up with just a, a couple slides at the end after questions. So we'll be kind of cutting off the questions five minutes before the end of the session. So with that, Francois, I'll leave it to you. All right. Thank you. Thank you very, very much for be, uh, being here. Uh, I really love this JNUC. Uh, it was really amazing. I saw so many good sessions. I saw uh, Yanis' session, which was amazing, James also. And they talked about DP and how to make their experience better for uh, our end users. And this is how I started like a few years ago. My, I was told by a client to create an onboarding uh, session, an onboarding mechanism to have all their employees have the opportunity to choose between uh, a Windows or a Mac. And I had two requirements. The first one, we had to have the full Apple experience, meaning that it cannot be the same as just having a PC imaging and everything. We need the, to give the user the exact same as it would have uh, if, they, if it would be a personal device. And the second one was that it couldn't cost, cost more than a PC. <laughs> so thanks to the IBM talk, this was uh, in quite well into uh, to talking about the TCO and everything. Why and uh, Sorry? Why yeah, it's fine. Don't worry, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. And um, so it went great. We chose Jamf, of course. And what we had with DP, VPP, with the Apple retail store and Jamf was uh, what James talked about. It's we had the users coming in getting like a shrink-wrapped uh, computer. They would open it, uh, then just start it, and go through the setup assistant. And at the end, what they had is this. And it felt a bit like, okay, now what? What would I do? Then they started to get something like this, a Dropbox, like the dock coming uh, up and down the Enterprise Connect and uh, Pulse Secure, and it felt really confusing for them. They didn't know what was going on. They, they just seeing, saw things like popping up, and they say, okay, what, what's next? What are you doing with my computer? Like, it's, it, is it my computer? Is it a company asset? Is it, uh, what, what am I allowed to do? And this is a thing about DP. We try to make it as easy as possible for the user, but it still misses something. On the iPhone, it's easy. We, get, we, uh, we see the springboard, and we see a bunch of icons coming up, and with um, a progress uh, circle, let's say. And on Mac, we don't get anything. We might get like a small progress bar uh, underneath, um, I forgot the name, see? <laughs> the launch pad, I think. And but that's it. So this, is, this session is about how I extended this experience, the Jamf experience, and how I made it better by leveraging open source. And I will show you like three examples of how to make this better. And also, and also I will uh, show you like a, a framework on how to code something uh, yourself, how to be part of the community and how to contribute back by making tools. So my name is Francois Le uh, You may know me as uh, FTIF too on Slack. And I'm an Apple consultant for Amaris, which is a 3,000 uh, employee worldwide based in Geneva. 
And we are here to help you to, to make, uh, to bring the most to your users, and be it Windows or Mac, in this case. We do development, we do a, a, a lot of things, so uh, feel free to, do, to uh, reach me if you need any help. So first thing about open source. So I guess you, most of you know about, already about open source. And for those of you who don't, open source is like a recipe. It's like giving, giving the, uh, the users, giving the community, what is your secret sauce? So it's, making a product is difficult, for sure, but sharing how you did it is even more difficult because you cannot, you, you have to make sure everything is, is right and that users can uh, use it, uh, uh, they can use it and also mechanisms can extend it and uh, build on it. And there's four essential freedoms. So this is for the Free Software Foundation. The first one is that you can use the program the way you want. Second one is study the, how the program works and understand it. Third is to share copies. And fourth is, fourth is to improve the program and distribute the improvements. So this is a great way to learn, to share, to, and to uh, extend what we can already do with the tools that we have. Apple and Jamf use open source. So you can check this in the acknowledgement or in uh, or either on macOS, on iOS, or uh, in uh, Jamf Pro. And they also contribute. So now let me give you three examples of this open source software. The first one is Autopicager. It is based on Autopicag, which was created uh, for Monkey and later uh, ported, or uh, yeah, let's say ported to uh, Jamf. Uh, with JSS importer from Share. Those, these guys made it possible. So Timothy Sutton and Greg Nigel created AutoPKG, then it became a very big community effort, and Share did the JSS importer, and Elliot Jordan did AutoPKG while he was at Lite Group. And it looks like this. On the top, you can choose the, the repositories, so it's like, uh, let's say books, and on the bottom you have the recipes. All you need to do is to select uh, the, uh, the book, let's say, and then select uh, the recipes that you want, run recipes, and what you will get at the end is that it will download, uh, build, package, and then uh, upload it to JSS along with policies, icons, and everything, so you don't have to do anything. So for you users, this is great because Packaging first is difficult, and second, it is. It takes a lot of time. So I'm sure you, those of you who did the packaging, know that it can take forever. So if you do it, you don't work on anything else, and if you don't, your user will get outdated package and uh, or nothing at all. So it's it's quite important to do it. So here's a small demo of how, about how it works. It's starting. Yes. So I already installed AutoPicager, and I configured it. So it's just it's just a matter of downloading this app, and then I uh, configure it with. Um, I don't know if it's working. Ah, okay. Ah, yes. Sorry. So, and then I configure it, uh, I configure GSS importer, and all you need to do is to uh, specify the GSS URL, login and password, and then choose the distribution point. So you can use JCDS, which is Jamf Cloud distribution point, and you can use also like local, AFP, SMB. Then you save, you go to repos and recipes, and all you need to do, like this is an example for Splash Ready, you, uh, uh, you can click on it, click on Run Recipe, and then it will download from GitHub automatically, package it, prepare all the smart groups and um, the policies, icons for the self-service if needed, not in this case, 
uh, and then upload everything to Jamf Pro. So it cannot be easier. It cannot be easier. And it's something you can also automate, meaning that uh, you can have it run every uh, night at 2 a.m., for example. So when you arrive at work in the morning, you have a fully updated GSS with a uh, Jamf Pro, sorry, with uh, uh, the packages that are ready to be used by your users. So here, it creates a, a simple um, a policy that can be uh, used. Um, how can I say? It's, uh, it's, uh, this policy, it's, uh, it's made for you testing users, you test users, and all you need to do at this point is to, uh, to add this package to uh, your main policy, let's say. A second thing I want to talk about is Jamf Migrator. So this was one of the uh, first open source tools that uh, uh, Jamf made. It's very, very good. It allows you, in fact, to um, um, migrate, no, sorry, to copy some uh, items from one Jamf Pro to another. So it's, it's user API from end to end, and it looks like this. You need to put the source server on the top left, then the destination server, and choose which items you want to copy over. So it is something that I use for my test environments. I have uh, one uh, production server and a test server that uh, I, I use to do uh, yeah, my test developments and all. So when I'm finished and th things work, uh, I use Jamf Migrator to migrate these items from, one, uh, from my test environment to my production environment. And you can also use this for beta. So when I spin up a beta instance, I take my, uh, uh, I, I use Jamf Migrator to copy my policies from my Jamf Pro instance to my beta instance. So this way I can easily test it. So it looks like this. I have my, uh, this is my lab uh, production environment, let's say on the left. It's starting, yeah. And on the right, this is a new GSS that I just spun up. It's a beta, in fact, from a, Jump station. I really encourage you to uh, to subscribe to the beta. So here's Jump migrator, migrator. So I chose uh, to do it manually. So you have to do things in a certain order at this time, but it's changing. First, you have to push your categories. So I select the categories that I want. In this case, it's critical. Uh, I select the computer groups. So these are all smart groups that are based on uh, application title does not have this and that. And then I, uh, I don't have it written here. So then I push uh, the uh, packages, which are only the metadata. So you don't push actually the .pkg file, you just push the metadata of it. So it creates a, um, a record in the database, but you still have to upload the package. So it's a great thing to do with, uh, to use with AutoPKG uh, as well, because AutoPKG can upload the package while this one uploads the metadata, copies the metadata. And then you select the policy you want to push, and you hit go. So now I just refresh. And here I can see all my enrollment policies that are here and ready to be used. So it cannot be simpler. The last thing I, want to, I need to do, of course, is to uh, copy the package that I have. So what I do here, I go to uh, the management preferences, then go to packages, select splash buddy in this case, and then the only thing that I need to do is drag and drop the package to uh, the choose file button. Then I save, and it uploads. That's it. So you need to do this for all the packages. It couldn't be easier. There's also another tool from uh, Richard Perf's Fountain, which is called GSS Configure Box. It's command line, it's a bit more involved, but it works very, very well. And it's something that you, both of them are open source, so feel free to look how things work, and it's a great way to get started on uh, the API. So remember what I, uh, I said earlier about this. We, the user arrived on the desktop. We saw, he saw all these things uh, popping up, and this was quite difficult for them because they wouldn't understand what was going on, and some of them even get, uh, got scared because they say, what are you doing with my Mac? Are you like trying to spy on me, maybe? 
So this is why we created uh, Splash Buddy. This is a tool that allows you to block the screen and show, um, you, uh, show information about what is going to be installed, how it went, and also information about uh, your, uh, your company or things that you install. When you, have, when you finish, when uh, the users quit Splash Buddy, in fact, they finish with a, they, they have a known, they leave the Mac in a known good state. So you know that everything went well. If it didn't, you can, uh, you can, you have a message telling them to do something. So this is how it looks. This is, sorry, I went too fast. I'll come back. <laughs> so this is how it looks. So uh, it was, uh, it's made by uh, James Smith from Culture Amp. He talked about it this morning in uh, a Culture First uh, onboarding. So uh, I really encourage you to, uh, to, to watch it. It's a great session. So this is how he, made, he did. Then it's configuring Splash Buddy is a little bit involved. It's, it's all about like configuring XML, making the right policies. So it's, you have to think a bit about what you want to do. And we did a Splash Buddy jumpstart yesterday, yesterday evening. So uh, thank you for all those who came. If you didn't, we will run a webinar very soon. So I will give you a, a, a QR code to scan if you are to join the newsletter to do so. And so now it's starting, okay. And something that you're working on is Splash Buddy Configurator. It will allow you to uh, fetch all the policies from Jamf. You will see them on the left and all you need to do is to drag and drop the PKG to the central area where uh, there, and the, even the self-service icon will be fetched. So uh, when you do this, you just uh, run them, you see a live preview on the right, and you export the package and upload it to Jump. Couldn't be easier. So we're working to get this out on the Mac App Store very soon. It's, so this is not a mock-up, it's an actual state. And uh, yeah, so I encourage you to, uh, to subscribe to the newsletter. So uh, uh, what you can do now with iOS 11 is just open the camera, point to the screen, and then you get a link. All, you, all we need is an email address, but please uh, say a little bit more so we can uh, know a bit better who's using a Splash Buddy or who wants to use it. And you can also um, join the Splash Buddy Slack group. So if you don't know about Slack, or if you haven't joined the Mac Admin Slack, Please do it. I will put a, a link later. There are others, uh, other ones, like other uh, splash screens, let's say. So progress screen from uh, Jason Trata, DP Notify from Joel, and uh, Splash Buddy. So DP Notify have a little icon because it's not on GitHub, it's on GitLab for some reason. So now let me talk a little bit about the process of releasing a product. Because these are software, they are open source software, but there's a huge gap between just doing a script for yourself or an app for yourself and making it available for two, uh, two people. I did two of those apps, so Splash Buddies, which we, you may know, and Majam, which is a tool that is not released yet, will help you to um, uh, make change to your um, Jump Pro from your iPhone and iPad. Because I really believe in, uh, in iPhone and iPad to, I try to, I have an iPhone and an iPad and I haven't touched my MacBook Pro all week, which is great. So I, what I want to do is when I'm in, uh, on the field, when I'm in the field and helping users, I don't want to get back or take my MacBook Pro out of uh, my bag. What I want is to, to, to help them as soon as possible and uh, with only a few taps. So here's the workflow. The first one is the ID. idea. It's uh, maybe you're in your bus, you, want to, you have an idea, and you need to share it. Second one is to create mockups. Third one is to learn Swift or any language. Fourth one is uh, create a minimum viable product. Then choose a license. Upload your code to GitHub. 
And the others are optional, but uh, they help me a lot to get people to contribute. Can run, uh, create unit performance and uh, UI test. Have something like Buddy Bill or Travis to uh, push things, uh, automatically build and push them to test flight if it's an iOS app. Localize your application. And of course, read the docs. So this is something that you can, you can do a little bit. So don't be afraid. Don't wait for like uh, until the product is finally ready. Uh, Splash Buddy was out in GitHub when it was yeah, a mess. But uh, then uh, I got a lot of help. And uh, we, are, we will release it very soon, this week. So about the prototyping. It's, there's a very, very good session in, uh, at the WDC this year by Guillaume Ardo. He talked about how to make, uh, how to do a very quick prototype uh, from like to get your ID out on the paper. So he uses Keynote just to create a simple interface. And the thing about it is so you can share your ID because there's nothing more difficult than just talking about something when you can just write it down and show it. Then the second one is mockups. So I use Sketch to do, uh, to do my mockups. So this is an example for uh, Majam. Like if I zoom a little bit, it looks like this. So these mockups will look professional and will help you to, to start talking with your clients and your team to make sure you're all on the same page. Because we all have very different ways of understanding something or, or not. And this makes sure that we all understand what's going to be built. I use Icons 8 to create, uh, uh, to add icons. It's a great tool that is free that you can use. Uh, you just download it, and then you can drag and drop icons to your presentation or to your mockups. And yeah, it has been very great to, to add this little touch that makes user, that makes viewer of uh, these mockups uh, more that more it's so they could relate a little bit more so they can see how it looks and it's not just like a mock-up like this it's it becomes more live then swift so i learned swift uh two years ago three years ago maybe and this has been great i started using python and you can use uh, Python Objective-C or you can, uh, you can use bash scripting. You can make programs of bash scripting with Cocoa Dialog, for example. Ah, a script that looks like programs, let's say. And, uh, <laughs> and you need to learn Swift, of course, which is quite easy to learn, to be honest. But it's, what is a bit more involved is Cocoa. Cocoa and Cocoa Touch. Cocoa is the framework for macOS, while Cocoa Touch is the framework for iOS. I used two books to learn them. One is a Cocoa Programming for OS X from the Big Nerd, Nerd Ranch Guide. It's from 2015, but I haven't found a better one yet. And the other one that I used is Cocoa Design Pattern. This one is way older, it's from 2009. But you will learn a lot about the design patterns and how to make, uh, how to it will help you to understand how like Apple uh, engineers think. And there's also, I have on the slide uh, here, there's also uh, one from Apple who was uh, released on the iBook store. Uh, I forgot the name, I'm sorry, but you can look it up, it's like Learn to Code or something like this. It's very, very, very well done. In fact, I know about it because I was uh, in the plane, I, I had forgotten my, uh, my Nintendo Switch, so I had to do something, so I... <laughs> So uh, I looked at the iBooks and I found this one. Ah, oh, yeah, it's uh, orange cover from Apple. Looks good. Uh, let's open it. And it's amazing. It's very, very well done. It's made for to teach people how to code, but there's everything you need to know on it to get started. Then the minimum viable product. It's quite easy when you start coding or start to do anything to get lost in the details. And this is how you start to get, 
yeah, you, your project can take forever and forever and forever. So what I do is I create a minimum viable product, which means that I first create a checklist. And here's my checklist for my jam. So first is user can enter a new jam, for instance, edit and delete it. Second is user can see a list of mobile devices, computers, and policies. Then user can tap on the mobile device and see its inventory organized in four tabs. First one is dashboard, which is only a placeholder. Second one is the details, it's the inventory uh, of the device. Third one comments, and fourth one logs. And that's all. This is, with this MVP, I already have something that can be, uh, that I can use in my everyday work. So it looked like this, in fact. So this is, was in the course of two days, how we made, uh, we started from scratch with just an ID and made some things that can be used. It's not perfect, far from it, but it's something that already works and I can show to people. Then open source is all about licenses. And there's three licenses you can choose. The first one is MIT, which is the most, the simplest one. All it says is that you cannot be held uh, responsible if anything goes wrong, is as is. Second one is Apache, which is, uh, it adds like for patents protection. And GPL is, uh, from the Free Software Foundation, this is uh, much, much more involved, let's say. In your, for example, if you, if you release the software as a GPL with a GPL license, I make it simple. Uh, if, you, um, if you release the software as a GP, with a GPL license, if someone modifies it, it needs to release with the same license. So it will always stay open. But the dance, downside to it is that like, lots of large or enterprises don't want to, to use GPL because it's too difficult on the legal side. So if you want to, to have something uh, simple that you want to, to get it out, uh, it's choose MIT. Then upload your stuff on GitHub. GitHub is like the Facebook for developers. And you will get, uh, uh, you will start to learn a lot. You can, you can find, uh, um, find projects, you can relate to people, you can uh, build, um, you can add, even if you, it's as simple as a script. There's something called a gist, so gist.github.com, and you can, it's just a, a text field where you can enter anything and share. So you can share like scripts, extension attributes, or whatever. So I really encourage you to do this. Then, unit testing. So part of Xcode is exit test. And what it means is that when you're finished working uh, on your product, on your project of, for the day, and before you upload it, uh, you push it to GitHub, you can just do command U. And this will tell you as here, test succeeded or not. And there's a very good book about it. It's, a, it's for iOS, but it works also for macOS. It's test-driven iOS development with Swift. It, it goes a bit far because uh, it's all about the test-driven development. And test-driven development means that first, you, before doing anything, so you have your MVP checklist, before doing anything, you just write the test. And then you run command U to test them. And of course, they will all fail because you don't get, uh, you don't have any uh, code working at the moment. So then you code, you do the minimum amount of uh, programming uh, to, to make the test pass. And you do the command U again, and now they will pass, hopefully again. And at this, and it's only now that you start to refactor to make things better. And unit testing is so important because when you, when you have contributors that will uh, start to push things uh, to modify your code, if you want to make sure that they don't break anything. So even for when you're the owner of the code, it's easy like, like two months later to start writing something, modifying just a little thing, and then everything's break. Or, or worse, it breaks after like a few days or a few, uh, few weeks because uh, you didn't notice it. So uh, having this is make sure that you have, uh, you, you make sure that things work. 
Then what I use also is Buddy Build. It's, you can also use Travis CI, T-A-A-V-I-S. This is the one that I use for, um, for Splash Buddy, sorry, and uh, Buddy Build that I use for iOS, my iOS apps. So every time you push something to GitHub, so you can do it straight from Xcode, it will, uh, Buddy Build will notice it with a webhooks, webhook and uh, um, download it, run the test. If they are successful, they will build, it will build it, build them, and then upload it to test flight. And test flight, uh, some of you have uh, access to the, like you, Rich, have access to the test flight um, uh, page for Majam. What it means that every time you push something, Buddy Bill will build it, push it to test flight, and then all your users, your test flight users, will get a notification saying, hey, there's a new version to test. And that's all. What you need to, to give test flight is only uh, the email of someone. And that's it. That they will receive an invitation by mail. They can uh, click on it and then get, uh, get started on testing your app. How to select your testers? So first, avoid friends and family, because they are too nice with you, or not nice enough, I don't know. <laughs> then look for people that are detail-oriented and care about things. And you want people that are passionate, because most of the time, you will, if someone doesn't care about uh, your, your uh, product, they will just yeah, if they launch it, they will say, yeah, okay, great. If it doesn't work, they will just close it and that's it. You will never hear from them again. So you want people that, uh, that, can, that want to share, want to uh, give you uh, a feedback and people that are passionate. Then about localization. I use localization is very hard. I worked like 10 years ago uh, at Apple in the localization team as a software test engineer. And I can tell you this is very, very, very hard to make it right. So I use Localize, which is a, a very good tool that it's web interface. So all you need to do is to download, um, uh, to export the localization from Xcode, upload it in this web interface, and then you can invite localizers. Uh, we'll see how all the strings, like these ones, and, be, and uh, start localizing your app. And lastly, documentation. So on GitHub, the readme is your home page. So make sure you make it as good as possible. And what you want here is to try to uh, answer the, the, the most important question your users will have. First, what does it do? So great, you heard about Splash Buddy, but what does it do? Then why is it useful? So it's good to, to, to know the what, but more important is why you need it. Because you need for your users, you don't want your users to get lost. And how to get started. And at the, and at the end, it's uh, how to get support and help. So this is how it looks. First, you get the badges. This is like something uh, everyone uh, does on GitHub. And then what it is, and then you can show it in action. So this is a 1.0 version, so it's not yet updated by, uh, still by, uh, by you, James. <laughs> and then you have a quick start, release history, and how to get help and how to start contributing. And then the documentation. So with every GitHub page, you have a wiki. It's free, you just have to, uh, to click, to, uh, or it's already uh, enabled anyway, so you can start uh, uh, writing documentation on the wiki. And you can, uh, people, uh, anyone, if you let them do, uh, if you uh, activate this feature, everyone can uh, modify the wiki page. And there are small GitHub, so you still get uh, small uh, Git repositories, so, uh, sorry. So you get uh, a versioning, so don't worry if someone like deface everything, you can uh, still roll it back. So that's the framework. And what I really want to tell you about this is that uh, what is important here is the community. Because as each of these stage, you can relate to the community. You can share uh, with, uh, from your ID, you share your idea to the community, then share the mock-up and everything all the way up to your, uh, your product when it's ready. And perhaps 
what I think is the most important asset in Jamf is Jamf Nation. Because you have lots of people, lots of Mac admin people that do the same work as we all do, uh, which uh, from like beginners to very advanced people and they're all here ready to help. So please go to Jamf Nation and help is a wonderful, wonderful place to, do, to get help. And also you have the Mac admin Slack. This changed the community forever, I think. <laughs> really, I don't know uh, who's using the Splash, but is the, sorry, the Mac, uh, Mac admin Slack here? <laughs> wow, good, that's not bad. <laughs> okay, so for you who don't yet use it, please go, it's great. You will meet so many people and it can feel uh, overwhelming at times because it's, it's a chat, so it's live. But you can, get, uh, you can go to these small, smaller channels where you can get very like, uh, specific help on something, or local channels uh, also. We have, for example, I'm, uh, I live in Switzerland and I'm French, if you noticed it. And <laughs> uh, so I, uh, I go to MacAdmins FR for the French uh, community, uh, French community, for the French speaking community, sorry and Switzerland for where all the Mac admin, for many Mac admins from Switzerland gather. And of course, so still talking about Splash Buddy, this is all the people that made it possible. So it's not, it's really not like uh, uh, something that I did my, my, by myself. It's at the start, yes, I was uh, the main uh, contributor to it or the only contributor perhaps, but I got a lot of feedback. And now what is amazing is that I get these people to uh, contribute code and they extend it. So uh, either you can use, uh, you can be a user or you can be a contributor. So please contribute and, and I, we are very welcoming. We're not here to just push a product, we're here to make the community better. So please, please contribute. And I really want to thank you these Mac admins. These are very uh, great people that uh, change the community. They, they release software, scripts, uh, extension attributes. Maybe they wrote uh, blogs, uh, blog posts, and, uh, or tweeted about it, but they are very, very, very important to us. Because what is great in this Mac admin uh, community is the community. So we are, uh, we are a very strong community. We are, um, and we are, how can I say? Uh, I think this is the thing, the thing that is important with us. So please contribute, don't be shy. It's okay to, to ask uh, stupid questions, or, uh, but stay open and, and reach out because we are all here to help and this is a strong thing about Jamf. What, well, before I conclude, I will, uh, I'm open to questions. So if you have any about, uh, so please feel free to ask if you have something you want me to dig deeper in. So you have, yeah, two microphones here. All right, and you have a, you have a couple minutes worth of content after Q&A, right? So yeah. if, we can, if anyone has a couple questions. Awkward silence, here comes, here comes a couple folks, awesome. Thank you. How can we help with test flighting uh, for Majam? Uh, are you on Slack? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, just reach to me on FTIFF yep. and I will add you to the. Okay. Uh, Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. So um, I, I work uh, at Adidas and they tend to want to keep everything in house. What kind of suggestions could you give about how to approach that kind of topic with your manager when you want to contribute to the community but maybe can't? or you know, maybe there's a lot more red tape in that area. How would you approach that? Yes. Uh, how to get management to support you in your open source uh, initiative, let's say? It's difficult, I won't lie. <laughs> what you can do is do, so, well, what I did, I'm not suggesting anything, but uh, maybe you could, is to, uh, Try to do something, you don't have to use your real name. Just try to do something and make it good. And then show it to your management and say, look, I have a very successful product and lots of people use it. Now, 
it could be uh, branded or it could be uh, uh, supported by all the others and push our uh, company to the right direction. And because, yeah, it takes some effort to make, to make this. It takes some legal effort. It takes uh, some, um, yeah, it takes, it takes a lot, to be honest. But it works. So Splash Buddy is something that I started on my own time. And then it's something that is uh, now will be like fully supported by uh, Amaris, my company. And so this is why we change the logos also. So you may have some uh, stickers now. And uh, so because what's really important is to contributing is great, but it's very hard to get the support behind, support from uh, other community member, support from your company. And your, your company can help a lot to uh, push this forward and to help the community. So, for example, what, uh, what I want to do at Amaris is to have, so they design the logo, that's okay, that hel help, they help for the legal side, but now they can also help me to bring uh, Splash Buddy to uh, companies. So they can uh, take care of the legal aspect, help for the compliance, and things like this. So I didn't talk about it, but uh, Splash Buddy is big on security and compliance. Is we really want the, uh, to make it right, and having like a, a, a company like Amaris with 2,000 uh, employees, I can just reach out at any time, and we have like people from uh, all over the world with uh, uh, lots of different uh, skill sets of iOS developers, uh, legal, uh, graphic designers, or anything marketing, and so it's great to have them to help me. To, to bring this forward. So it's a community help, but it's also uh, having your company to push forward, push it forward really helps and everyone benefits at the end. Oh yeah, yeah, sorry. Okay, so community defense software. This is the last thing I want to say. It's, if you're on Slack, you're maybe you're on a Microsoft Dash Office the, uh, channel, which really changed everything. So, I stole this from William. Uh, Office was released uh, a few years ago, but for me, or for us, the real change was when Paul Bowden joined the Slack. Because he started to listen, to listen to us and to uh, re push our ideas, needs, and everything to the product. And now there's so many of them Look, and this is only the, in the official page, but I know there's many more. These people help us uh, to and listen to us and make sure that Microsoft Office is better uh, thanks to the community. And there's one last, one last thing I want to say, it's about Apple. Apple is known to be a bit secretive, but they have a, a great team, which is Apple Professional Services. And they may not do uh, open source work, but uh, they really listen to the community and uh, build products for the community. You may know Apple Enterprise Connect. And there's a new software that they just released, which is Apple Provisioning Utility. So if you know Configurator, you know Configurator, Apple Configurator? OK. So, it's a great tool, but you still need an admin or someone that is a bit knowledgeable to, uh, to, use, to use it. And it's good, it's very good for, for small teams. It's good to do like, to, to create, uh, yeah, to, to do like some uh, processes, let's say. But what you really want at the end of the day is to have something where the user can only have to plug their device and wait for the green button to, uh, to, lit, to light. So this is how it looks. On the left, so this is not an AC, it's uh, a cart. And all, this is all the user will ever see, meaning that's something you can use uh, for retail where the, uh, if you use like, if you have a po point of sales iPad, all they will have to do is just plug it and wait for the light to be green. So you know that each time you pick up an iPad, they are in a uh, um, known state. 
All of, uh, so these are multiple iPads and you can plug them at any time and they all follow uh, automator um, actions. Meaning that you can say, I want this iPad to be erased, then uh, to be uh, unrolled in Jamf using GP, then to have this and that installed, and this uh, wallpaper to be, uh, to be set, and then wait for 100% uh, charge. And wait, when uh, all this workflow is finished, the light will go green and the user can just pick it up. So if you have questions about it, so you can uh, reach to uh, the Apple PS, which are all around. I don't know if there's any in this room. Yes, Adam. Hi. So feel free to reach uh, Adam, he's here. <laughs> and really, Adam, thank you for bringing this. It's uh, a real amazing software. <laughs> so community is really the heart of everything. And you don't have, uh, you can share your recipe and still run a business and still be successful. So remember the recipe I did earlier? So it's Jamie Oliver who did it, and he also runs restaurants, and it works. You can share your, uh, your secrets and gain money and, uh, and feed people. So now I wish you a bon appétit. <laughs>